Come on. Temperature. Temperature. I need my temperature. Zon, what are you doing? I'm trying to get this little car to take my temperature. I can see that, but why? Haven't you heard? There's this whole new system. Patients are using Formula One car technology to monitor their vital signs. Yes, Zan, I have heard of this. And it is true, patients are getting their vital signs monitored by Formula One race car technology, but this is obviously not how it works. You're right, I need a real car. Sounds like a case for investigation, ouch. It seems totally bizarre that taking a patient's vital signs could be helped by a car. So I'm heading off in the fast lane to meet the motors. And I'm starting with a pit stop on the wards to meet Matt, who's just had a heart operation. You've got a lot of different monitoring going on here at the moment. Can we see how many wires are on your chest? Matt is wired up to a monitor to check his vital signs. Vital signs are important bits of information about a patient, such as oxygen levels and heart rate. Are you allowed to unplug yourself at all? What I have to do is I have to get my nurse. They uh, will take this off. Doctors and nurses write down Matt's vitals by hand on a chart. This system's time-consuming for the staff and, more importantly, uncomfortable for Matt. So, at the moment, for you, basically, leaving the bed is a real hassle. Yeah. Chris, this is where the cars come in. In Formula One, monitoring systems have gone up a gear. This is Dr Adam Hill. He's the chief medical officer at McLaren and works out how Formula One technology can be used in hospitals. What a cool job. So how much is a Formula One car like a human being? Well, Formula One cars are incredibly complex devices. They have an engine, a bit like our heart. They have a need to breathe, a bit like our lungs. And they're incredibly intelligent. Oh, just like me. And the healthier the car, the faster it goes. So just like a patient, its vital signs are monitored. We use little gadgets like this that collect information at up to 960,000 times every single second from a single sensor. Wow, that is amazing. The F1 system is wireless, efficient and fast. If only the hospital had something like this. Well, Dr Adam has worked with Birmingham Children's Hospital to create a new system. It's a world first. It's brand new and I'm going to try it out. Alex, that, that's yes, it now. That's it now. It's flashing. It's flashing. It's, it's sending the signal to the monitor. Yeah. It has one sensor doing the same job as the six that Matt is hooked up to. The results are instantly available on the computer monitor. Bye-bye charts. <laughs> Plus, it's wireless. I can walk anywhere, even do a few press-ups if I like. You're doing very well, Chris. All this time, it's recording my vital signs. Perfect. And then I can download my results when I get back. Even though I was jumping at the other end of the hospital, the computer knows what I've been up to. Well, the hope is that children will be able to go home with this system and they will be able to take one of these tablets with them so we can log on from the hospital and see what's happening in their, ha in their homes. This would be life-changing for patients like Matt. How much easier would you find it if you could just wear that new monitor? A lot. Seriously, I would lose a lot of these wires. It's small, compact, and that monitor takes 60 seconds to uh, monitor your heart. The other one monitors it every second. And I think it'll be great for the future. Okay. And then hopefully other kids uh, will find it a lot easier in hospital. Thanks, Matt. Who would have thought that hospitals can learn stuff from a car? And now to our lab. Are you ready for some incredible experiments? I've never seen this happen before. We're getting gross. Ah! Ah! We're going big. Oh! And dangerous. Oh. Remember, we can only do these experiments because we're doctors. Don't try this at home. Today, we're looking at your bones. Oh. How many times do I have to tell Zan? not to put giant snails on my clipboard. In fact, there are giant snails all over the lab. Zan, this is meant to be a snail-free lab. I'm preparing for our bone experiment. And to do it, I thought I'd talk to creatures with different kinds of skeleton. Stacy here has got her skeleton on the outside of her body called an... Backside skeleton. Right, and what have you actually learned from talking to the snail? Stacy's exoskeleton is a little bit like our bony skeletons. 
it needs to be light enough that she can move, but to support and protect her body, it also needs to be... Strong. Well, that's just like human bones, and I have one here. This bone is over 100 years old. It's an adult human thigh bone, or femur. Like Stacy's shell, it's light. But what is amazing about your femur is that this lightweight piece of body kit is one of the strongest bones in your body. A femur can withstand huge weights pushing down on it. Let's take a closer look to see how that's possible. Now, your bone gets its strength from its clever design. This outer part of the bone is hard like rock. It's called cortical bone. But if this thigh bone was solid cortical bone, it would be way too heavy. So let's have a look inside. Because this bone isn't living, there's no bone marrow. So you can see something else. At both ends of this bone, there is a fine lattice of thin strands of bone. And this is called trabecular bone. It's very light because of all the space in there. This is a similar kind of structure to the honeycomb in a bee's hive. The honeycomb structure in your bones is what gives them the strength to withstand weight pushing down on them. And I can show this to you, Chris, with some toilet roll. Yeah, really? Here they are, all arranged in a honeycomb structure. Chris, on you get. All right, on your head be it. What do you think will happen when Chris stands on them? Wow, look at that! Zahn's toilet roll collection is supporting my entire body weight. Honeycomb is such a strong structure that your bones can carry a huge amount of weight. In fact, gram for gram, bone is stronger than steel. Stronger than steel? Well, that sounds like a challenge. All right, well, can you give me a hand down and we can do it? Come on. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. Bumps and daisy. <laughs> we want to know how much weight a femur can actually hold. We need to put it to the test. I've built a steel platform that is being propped up by four cow femurs, or thigh bones. These bones, which are like yours, have the weight of the platform pushing down on them, a very heavy 300 kilograms. And the bones are happily holding it. So I think we need some heavier things to really put them to the test. Zand? Don't worry, Chris. I've got this. Simon, forwards. There you go, Chris. How's that for heavy? Well, Zan, I must say this is excellent. You've got a sofa, a coffee table, a television, some shelves, basically the contents of someone's entire lounge. <laughs> Wait a minute. This is the contents of my lounge. Now, the four cow's femurs are supporting the weight of this very heavy steel platform. The sofa, the coffee table, television, and the bookshelf. That is a total weight of 508 kilos pushing down on the bones, and they are still happily holding it all up. Impressive. So we're going to need something even heavier. Let's add a fridge freezer and a washing machine. Is that my washing machine? I'm not sure if it's your washing machine, Chris, but it's got your unicorn onesie in it. In she goes. So the question is, can our femurs support the total weight of 715 kilos? And the answer is, they can! I must say, I think we're going to have to find something a bit heavier. Enough. You're not having anything more from my house. I'm taking all of this back right now. Oh. Time to get all this stuff home. Right. Take it away! What's going on? What's happening to my stuff? We're going to find out if those femurs can handle the combined weight of the sofa, the coffee table, the television, the fridge freezer, the bookshelf, the washing machine, the steel platform, and the removal van. And Mr. Grumbles. That's a combined weight of 2,274 kilos. That is amazing, and it's all thanks to the super strong, super light structure of your bones. So we've shown you that the strength of your bones comes from a special honeycomb structure inside them. And we've shown that this amazing design means bones can withstand huge weights pushing down on them. If bones are so strong, you might be wondering, how do they ever get broken? 
Well, it's all to do with the angle of impact. Femur bones are designed to withstand enormous forces along their length. But if you hit it from the side, it's a different story. Remember the toilet rolls. End to end, they're immensely strong. But turn them on their side and they crush easily. Well, it's the same with your bones. Now, Zand, what I want you to do is to apply a moderate and precise force to the middle of that bone. You got Absolutely. it? Absolutely. Stand aside, Chris, while I do some science. Roar! Mighty Zand and his bone-crushing hammer! Daisy, 